um, which is Adam Carolla was on Rising uh, with Sagar and Jetty, and he was talking about the 2020 race, and he basically pointed out that authenticity is very important. That was that was uh, one of the things that he brought up is authenticity is very important, right? And uh, Trump Trump has he points out that Trump has authenticity, but he has this grandiose authenticity, and that is true. Like I I think Trump is authentic in how narcissistic he is. Like, he's not hiding that shit, you know? Like, I think other candidates are probably as or in in the same respect of narcissism as Trump, but they kind of play it down. Like, they, the, 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 that, that's one of the things about the liberals that I think a lot of people complain about, in, including myself, is um, that they get smug, and that makes them inauthentic. Like, the smugness kind of makes them inauthentic. But with Trump, he... Because the difference is the liberals kind of get smug, but, like, play it off like they're not smug. Um, Trump is not. Trump is, like, really leans into the smugness. You know? Like, he makes these very short, terse statements, and he's super proud of those short, terse statements. And he loves them. Um, so he's got that he's got that grandiose narcissist authenticity, and I think that was part of the thing that made people want to vote for him. Now, uh, on the Democratic side, we do have uh, very authentic candidates. We have Tulsi Gabbard, we have Bernie Sanders, and we have Andrew Yang. Those those are the three candidates. I, I, Adam Carroll points this out, and I, I I agree with him on it. Is those are the three candidates on that stage that are very, very authentic, right? Um, and, you know, you, people throw out a bunch of other people. Uh, people can claim that Mayor Pete is authentic, but Mayor Pete is in that, like, liberal smugness category uh, where he, you know, he was basically in, like, neoliberal think, think tanks and he went to, like, high elite schools because his parents were, were able to help him get in there and shit. Uh, and, and he has that awful, like, it's this fucking round table before he became mayor, uh, talking about, like, poor communities and education and, like, making them really want it. And, and like, it, it's, it's just this weird off-base shit that doesn't really make any sense. Where, but it's like you don't, you don't get it. You're out of touch and you're pretending like you are not. Um, so... Kamala Harris, people said, were was authentic until you saw her record. So, like, she came out and she was like, I stand for the people. And it was like, yeah, is it the people that you fucking put in prison? Is it the single moms you wanted to throw in prison? Is that who you were standing by? So she was inauthentic in the way that she did it. because, And that was the thing is she never fucking apologized for her record. She always said she was proud of it, right? She chastises Joe Biden uh, during the debates about his record that he's proud of and then when somebody calls her out on her record that she's proud of she doesn't come out and like yeah I'm fucked up I made some errors uh, in you know when I was the DA I fucked that up I I didn't do great I did some things that were good maybe but yeah I I had some pretty bad uh, policies and you know, uh, I, I thought I was doing good, but it turns out that I wasn't. And I'm sorry, like, but she never fucking did that shit. So she's really not authentic. I do think that Tulsi is very authentic. Um, because she doesn't back down from what she stands for. Much like Bernie Sanders, she's pretty consistent on what she stands for. Um, you know, and, and, I, and I also think that she's... She's the type of candidate that's willing to hear you out. Uh, that when you have a difference of opinion, um, when when you see some see a topic or or an issue uh, in a different perspective than her, she's willing to hear hear out your perspective. Um, and again, same thing with Bernie, right? Like there's there were a, a bunch of clips after the 2016 election of Bernie going to places like West Virginia and Kentucky. Um, and not like big cities, is like these smaller communities. And these were not people that were going to vote for him. These were people that were probably going to sit there and yell at him, call him fucking socialist and shit. But he sat down with them and listened to, 
and really and really listened, right? Like he he wasn't f- pretending to listen and waiting for his opportunity to talk and be like, you know, I was talking to Billy Bob, or like he wasn't really, like trying to tell a story about some other fucking person. No, he was like, this is a, I'm yeah, I'm here. So, I think Tulsi's that kind of a person. Uh, now. She voted present for the impeachment. And I have very complicated, mixed feelings about that. Uh, and I'll preface this by saying that, look, if you're a supporter of somebody, uh, it is okay, it is 100% okay for you to criticize that person, right? For you to have disagreements with, with that person and you can still be a supporter of them. Like, like I'm still a supporter of Andrew Yang even though I disagree with him on Julian Assange. Um, you know, has my support pulled back a little bit? Sure, uh, yeah, probably. Um, has my support of Tulsi pulled back a little bit? Again, it's complicated um, because she came out and gave her reasoning behind it, right? And this kind of shows the authenticity of, of, of Tulsi Gabbard a little bit. Um, she explained why she did that. She explained that, uh, you know, that he, Trump, has committed crimes. Um and uh, nobody is above the law, but the way that the Democrats are doing this impeachment hearing is partisan and divisive. And it's just going to divide people even more instead of bringing people together to say, hey, this dude committed some crimes, uh, so let's bring him to trial about these things because these are like big constitutional level crimes. Um, but they're not, right? They had Russiagate, that fucking failed, and then they were like, Ukraine, that's the next one. And they keep looking for these smoking guns that don't fucking exist, right? There's all of these people, oh, but quid pro quo, quid pro quo. And it's like, well, where? Like, there's there's some transcripts. It's murky at best. Like, the Ukraine situation is murky at best. From all the stories that I've heard, from, you know, a lot of reports that I've kind of listened to, it is murky at best. That's what I can give them. You know, Zelensky was like, I didn't feel like he was fucking holding up aid. Also, Congress was holding up aid. So, you know, like, it's all this murky shit, and they went about this in the worst way, and his numbers are going to go back up. Because you, because his diehards aren't going to pull back, and then the people that are already, like, yeah, I don't like Trump, but I'm not a Democrat. Well, they're not going to fucking vote for the Democrats after this. And then he gets to spin a narrative of, well, I really didn't get a chance to be a good president because look at what Pelosi and the Democrats did, right? Like, and then he's going to win again. Because this is them basically saying, we'll kick him out. We'll have some neocon go up against some neoliberal and go back to status quo. She's like, do do we really want to go back to status quo, though? The status quo kind of fucking sucked. So her, Tulsi's explanation of uh, of why she voted present, I agree with because I think this impeachment is a charade. And if you really wanted to get him on something, if you really wanted to get him on something, you would bring up the emoluments clause. You would have brought up the emoluments clause before you brought, started screaming Russia and went down this red scare McCarthyism bullshit that makes absolutely no sense and has zero proof and zero viability and has been proven to have zero proof and zero viability. You would have started talking about the emoluments clause. And we would be like, that's the one. You're, we're getting you out of here, buddy. And then you would have gotten him out. Right? And then we would have to deal with President Pence, which would have been uh, probably maybe even scarier because um, he's a fucking right-wing theocrat. And based on her votes, she did lose some numbers in the poll, right? I think her numbers slipped a little bit uh, based, on, uh, based on her vote of present. Uh, and I'm, it's very complicated because... At first, part of me is like, yeah, I think you should take a stance on that. But your explanation also makes sense because it's what I think the impeachment is. It's a charade. It's a partisan tactic. Uh, and it's not It's not based in anything real. It's based in another attempt to 
deflect away from the fact that the Democratic Party has also lost its way. Um, you know, uh, but but here's the thing. She's sticking to the position. She's like, no, I think this is the right way to go. And regardless of what, what way she would have voted, I think they would have spun... The media fucking hates Tulsi Gabbard. They hate Tulsi Gabbard. Um, they villainized her uh, a, a bunch. To the, to the point where SNL literally portrays her as a fucking Disney villain. So outrageous. So out of... Like, and, and that really shows how out of touch they are with what this person actually stands for. You know, and the, and so regardless of what she would have done, she would have been she would have been put into the spin. She voted yes to impeach him. And a bunch of the media people would have been like, oh, just coming from the person that criticizes the Democrats. Look who's joining our side now. Blah blah blah. Wait, is she a real progressive? Right? Like it would have been narratives like that. Had she voted no, they would have just continued the McCarthyist, you know, uh, the, the, the McCarthyist, uh, 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 accusations, these false accusations of, of, of Russian assets and all that sort of stuff, right? She voted present and they're still coming after her, which kind of shows you that this is an authentic thing because it's basically like damned if you do, damned if you don't. So I might as well just be honest about it. She's challenging the Democratic Party, her party, to be better. And I think that's good, right? And as a supporter of, of Tulsi Gabbard or of Bernie Sanders or, 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 or of Andrew Yang, I think it's good that as supporters, we look at them and say, you know, I'm on your side about a lot of things, but I disagree with you on this one thing, and here's why. And kind of push them in that direction to be like, do you get my perspective? Um, and a respectful candidate will say, yes, yes, I do. And I, and I totally understand where you're at. I'm going to stick with what I believe in. But thank you for bringing this perspective up because it does evolve my idea a little bit. You know, that sort of Mayor Pete, he's not interested in doing that. Joe Biden doesn't even know what's happening. <laughs> Hey folks, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, a thumbs up. Uh, please share it around because content like this doesn't really get shared around all that often because of the topics that I'm talking about. Uh, and if you enjoyed these videos, you'll probably enjoy my live stand-up comedy as well. Uh, I talk a lot about the similar topics, similar stories, um, address a lot of issues and philosophy in my stand-up. Uh, so I'm going to be on tour all across the country this year uh, working uh, on, on my new show. Uh, so if you are in New York City, uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Boston, Massachusetts, Portland, Maine, Burlington, Vermont, Middlebury, Vermont, uh, Bridgewater, Vermont, I'm going to be coming to your city in the next few weeks. You can go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Grab your tickets, RSVP to these events, and come hang out with me. Uh, while you're on my website, you can also become a patron to help content like this uh, and become a, a, a pretty much a people sponsor of the show. Uh, go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha uh, to check out all the tiers and the rewards and uh, all the fun stuff that you'd be supporting. Uh, and my website's going to be updated soon to include a bunch of uh, alternative sustaining membership options as well. But again, if you want to come see me live, you can check out all of my tour dates because I'll be touring all across the country this year uh, at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R A M A N noodlescomedy.com. Thanks so much for checking out this video and we'll see you on the road.